We were born and raised here in Elgin, Illinois. Elementary, middle school, high school, and when I got my first symptoms was the probably first month of my senior year. At the beginning, since they were just symptoms, it was running a lot of tests, get going from one doctor to another, one specialist to another. I started homeschool until the symptoms got progressively worse. And that's when I was admitted to the hospital and the rehab center. And I was admitted for about two months and a half. I didn't go back to high school per se. And I was able to um, gather enough credits to graduate with the rest of my class. If something was difficult for me, how to fix it? You know, you do have to be creative as a medical person in the field or a physical therapist. When I was on oxygen that I couldn't speak, how was I able to call my nurse? And I couldn't push a call button because I couldn't move. So therefore they taped a straw to a sensor and taped it to the bed. So I would blow into the straw and it would signal the sensor. And that's how the nurse got her call light. Family members, they were the ones I counted on. They were the ones that were around a lot. And friends, yeah, just totally dropped off the map. So they were going on living their best life, their senior year, and I was going through all of this. When you're able-bodied, sometimes it's fun to do all these fun activities, but that's what you're doing, the activity. As we're now, it's a different ball game of spending time together, learning about each other, each other's day or each other's life. I was more, I feel adventurous. Right now I do tend to overcompensate, but back then it's just like, you wanna do a roller coaster, let's do a roller coaster. You wanna do this, you wanna do that. You know, I was always down. And now I am down to do all these things. It's just the specifics of it. Can I do it? If I can do it, I'll do it. Um, my oldest nephew is 26 right now. He was, uh, two and a half when I got sick. He got me dancing with him. He got me playing soccer with him, pretending he was on a motorcycle, all the physical stuff. He got all of that. Then the other ones came along and I didn't get to do any of that really. You know, it was very limited I mean, what I could do with them. And it's always difficult because they'd want to do things not understanding why I couldn't do it at that moment. I do sometimes use my crutches when I'm out and um, Anywhere I go, my footing, my steps have to be super careful because I can easily trip. So yes, you best believe I fell a million times. It doesn't just happen to me at the club. It could happen to me on a rainy day at the mall. It could happen to me at um, the library. You know, if my crutch gets wet at the bottom, best believe it's gonna slip. When you're able-bodied and fine, you don't always think about other people and what they're going through. I'd like to think that it has made me a better person, more considerate work a little bit harder at anything and everything. Um, I have what you would call drop foot, so my foot hangs a little bit like that. So I like to use wedge shoes or shoes with heels. It makes me feel more stable when I'm taking steps or walking. Well, some older lady and like, didn't say it directly, but said it, you shouldn't be wearing those shoes. Those shoes are dangerous. She said she was a nurse, you know. Again, I get it because you treat patients like that, you're in the medical field, but who's living this life? Believe it or not, people will be like, I wouldn't be able to live like that. I'd be walking by now. I've had that said to me before. Like if I'm choosing to be like this. Um, sometimes it's like because we're like this or I'm like this, that I'm lazy. That I don't want to do the physical therapy. That I don't want to be fully physical because they see me in a chair, you know, they might come to a different conclusion of what my diagnosis is. So people get in the way, you know, they park their cars where they shouldn't. They take up the handicap um, spaces, shopping sometimes. The, the spaces are too small for our wheelchairs. I'm, I have a manual chair where other people have electric chairs, so we don't have the space. That hinders us to get around. Accessible doesn't always mean accessible. It's just, again, in consideration it's people not putting themselves in the situation. I can tell you when I walk into a restaurant or a store, the person that put the furniture had no comprehension of a walker, a wheelchair, crutches, you know, because the space is so limited. Stairs, ramps, super far away. Bathrooms, there's always an able-bodied person in the handicapped bathroom. 
things that aren't so high, like the soap dispensers. Sometimes they're too high, so lower soap dispensers, you know, paper towels, stuff like that, honestly. It, a little bit does go a long way. At a concert, wheelchair seating is never on the floor. It's never front row. You know, we never get to be up close. We don't get to meet artists in that way. But being Mexican, we have bailes, dances. And sometimes a security guard would be like, hey, you want to meet the artist? So I'll get to go backstage, you know, stuff like that. But that's not like an everyday thing or anything. <laughs> we don't feel like it's our job to educate you on our limited mobility or disability. You know, I'll get a lot of stares. And by now, I wouldn't think that is, is a thing, but it still is a thing. Does them staring take the curiosity away? Does it answer their question? No, right? So one, either don't stare, or two, ask if you can ask. And if you don't feel confident in asking me, then, you know, grab your phone and look something up. I think it's education, it's conversation, it's learning, taking the time and making the effort, just like anything else. And if it wasn't for my family, and if it wasn't for my core friends, this would suck even more than it already does. But I have that encouragement. I have that strength from them when I don't feel it for myself. And it's nice to have people see in you what you don't see in yourself. The best thing you could do is, you know, live your best life, do the most. And I don't mean extravagantly, it's just do what makes you happy, what you're passionate about, and always think about other people. When I sell my piñatas, not only do I make something fun for a party, I donate money from my funds to charities, to making care packages. That makes me feel good because, yeah, I am paying it forward in a sense. When I'm doing stuff for other people, honestly, that's when I'm at my best. Even if I'm hosting a party, even if I'm making you a drink, a good drink to make you feel good, it's when it makes me feel the most capable.